Ooh, shiny. So much wasted product. Welcome back to Hobby Bolt. My name is Skylar, and if you have clicked on this video, you are curious about the Molotow Liquid Chrome Marker for your model kit, for your Gundam, whatever. We are going to focus on its use as a marker. You can get it in three separate sizes. They're all alcohol based, and you can also get a refill, which you can immediately put in an airbrush. To go on that part about it being refillable, I have watched where you can use the refill. You're literally just going to pop off the tip right there with a knife and just go boop, and then you can refill these pens. I will put all the links in the description below. I will put the cost of them and everything like that. This should be right here, right here, yeah. We are not gonna go over the airbrush today. We're just gonna go over the four millimeter, arguably what I consider the best, cheapest, easiest way to get a reflective chrome paint job on your model kit, your Gundam, whatever. Alcohol based. Be sure to have rubbing alcohol just in case you get something somewhere, like my hands for one. Make sure you have rubbing alcohol. Unfortunately, because of COVID in my area, we have no rubbing alcohol in any store anywhere and it's on back order and I hate it. But anyways, let's not focus on that. Let's focus on why I decided to do this project right here. Long story short, my SD Gundam here, SD Red Ashtray, it got chewed up. It had decals on it right here, and my cat decided to chew on the saber, as Smaug likes to do regularly. I have the MG version of the Sengoku Red Ashtray, and he comes straight from Bandai with an injection mold that is already metallic, which by the way, if you haven't built this kit yet, I highly suggest it. Look, look at the back. Like, are you kidding me? He's so cool. I haven't painted him or anything because I just like the way that he looks. Like, he's cool right out the box. But I wanted to replicate this without too much trouble because it is just an SD Gundam. I've already done the Saber here, and I would say compared to the Bandai one, it's not as rich, but it certainly did the job. This is without a primer, without anything underneath it, directly on the actual plastic. I just cleaned the plastic after it had the adhesive on it, and I mean, come on. So, the next part we're gonna do here is we're going to take off these tacky... <laughs> it's not one of my videos until a part comes off. We're going to take off these tacky little metallic decals, and we're gonna start slowly putting chrome accents on these pieces. I'm going to unmask this for you so you guys can see it, but like, you know what? I can see my face in that. Can you see the camera? Look at that. Look at how amazing that Molotel is. Molotel liquid chrome creates a mirror finish on smooth non-absorbent surfaces such as glass or plastic. The paint is highly opaque and permanent with good UV resistance and a low odor formula. Flowmaster technology assures consistent paint flow, so you shouldn't have to worry about too many bubbles or anything like that. But it still means you need to pay a little bit of attention to it because it's not gonna turn out perfect every single time. Another thing that I wanna note about this, now I'm going ahead and doing another coat because it seems that I have booped, I have, I have booped this and I wanna fix it so that we can get an overall mirror coat. The more coats that you put on, the duller the shine is gonna be and a little bit chunkier it's gonna look and nobody wants that. I have used the spoon here. I have primed the pen until you can see that there's actually product on the tip of the pen. And we're just gonna dab, 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 dab to cover that spot that I booped. Remember, you can also use rubbing alcohol if you have it available to help thin just like you would with any other paint and there you go. Another thing that should also be noted too is you want this to completely dry because if you go and do a second coat, if you so choose to, let's say you aesthetically want a bigger coat, 
um, make sure it's completely dry, otherwise you're just going to muck up the whole entire thing. Same rule as with any other painting that you're doing, you want a flat surface, you want an even surface, and if the paint underneath is wet, it's going to take even longer to dry, it's not going to look as nice, so good general rule of thumb is to make sure that if you are doing multiple coats, you should give them an adequate amount of time. I've seen a couple of videos where guys said that it should literally wait overnight. We're not going to wait completely overnight, I'm going to show you guys what happens when I'm going to go ahead and unmask this, but... You want, you want to wait a decent amount of time if you're going to do a second coat. You want to wait a decent amount of time overall if you're going to do anything else anyways because you want to make sure that it completely cures and that it looks good. So I'm going to show you guys how to apply it to the actual piece. Um, I would do an over the head tutorial shot, but my Sony over the head tutorial camera overheated, it died, it's super ancient, so I hope this is good enough. Let's get started. Finish getting rid of all the adhesive off of this. We are going to try this without masking it so I can show you guys the capillary action on it. It may have a bit of a mess up on it. I didn't spend too, too, too much time cleaning this up because I need to panel line it and do a little bit more work, but as you can see, I cleaned it up really, really quickly. And even with the mask lines, just with how much I use the marker, it didn't completely go perfectly. That's why we're going to test out just using the pen without actually masking it so that you can see the capillary action and the flow master attachment on it uh, work. When it comes to painting Gundam parts, I'm sure you guys have heard about a million times, just make sure you clean them. If you clean them, you get rid of all the mold release and which is the just the coating that they put on the mold and then they inject the plastic at Bandai there, they inject the plastic into the mold and the mold release just makes it so that the plastic comes off without attaching to the mold. And so that will end up on your pieces and it's one of the main things that will mess up a good paint job. Push down, make sure that the product comes out. You can see it right there, so. We gotta be a little bit more careful because we don't have it masked. It's staying in fairly good. We're just gonna clean up really quickly instead of masking it off. Ooh, look at me. Go Skylar, go Skylar. Look at how easy it is to do though. Like, just make sure you have enough product coming out. <gasps> Yay. I'm just gonna move it around to make sure that it actually gets in all of the little crevices and the little nooks and everything like that. I feel like with this particular size model, the smaller marker would do better, but we don't got one, so we're working with what we got. For the sake of showing you guys, because all levels of builders are here on this channel. Look at that. One coat, opaque. I have these Tamiya miniature Q-tips. Swipe it right where we don't want it. Yeah! See how easy that is? Live on, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yes, it's so cool. I'm so excited. That was so easy. Like, it took like three seconds. Like I said, make sure that, like I said, make sure that the coat's dry. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a couple more coats and we will see what it looks like. And then afterward, we're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna end the video. We're gonna leave it alone. So it can have a couple more days then I'm gonna pan align it and I'm gonna finish the accent pieces on this. You can see without masking it, it still turns out pretty good. Um, I would suggest to mask it just because it gets a little messy and without giving it a proper day to actually dry out, um, I'm just gonna leave it alone and not completely clean it. I am going to finish this project and post it on my Instagram, so be sure to check it out. As you can see, you can definitely just use it right out the box and it could look really, really good. That is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support. Please check out my Instagram community and definitely hit the subscribe button so you can see my content that I create in the future. Uh, let me know if you guys wanna see anything, if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.
here's another test I did as well. As you can see, this is the primer. This is non-primer, just on a regular, just on a regular spoon. You can tell quite a difference using the primer as opposed to not. Some of that has to do with the application process and the number of coats and everything like that. But really, it's really up to you how it comes out. It wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and use primer, but it is not necessary. Honestly, it is your creative journey. So whatever you wanna do, there is no right and wrong answer. Well, there is right and wrong answers, but who really cares? It's a hobby. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to, on all of these tacky stickers here and everything like that, I'm definitely going to do chrome on these. I'm gonna leave the white alone, I think. I wasn't gonna spray paint this, but now I kinda just wanna make all the red, red weird stickers just chrome. Why is everything chrome? <laughs> yeah. Molotow liquid chrome. It's like a magic wand right into chroming everything. Let's go. Could you imagine a panel lined Gundam, but with this stuff, it might look kind of chunky and not so good. But if you use the smaller tip and put it through the panel lines, that might be kind of cool. Ooh, let me know if you've done that. That would be really cool. I wanna see Let's that. go.